Hello, good evening, and welcome to another Out of Spec Reviews video. Welcome to the Rivian R1T, and welcome to my first road trip in an electric pickup truck. We are going from here in Fort Collins, Colorado, down to Arizona, down to Phoenix, and back. And I can't wait to show you what I'm going to be doing in Phoenix. I don't think it'll be able to be in this video, but... I am taking the Rivian R1T to go drive the Hummer EV. This is electric truck week for me here and uh, can't wait to go on a road trip. My first electric truck road trip here with the Rivian R1T. So let's take a look at some stuff before we head out. First of all, I have to say goodbye to the puppos. There's Blue. I don't know where Ellie is. There's Ellie. Hey Ellie. And uh, got to say goodbye to those guys. I'm charging up the Rivian here. I just finished up the 70 mile per hour highway range test for our sister channel out of spec reviews. And the truck did 290 miles on a charge. It is insanely efficient on the highway for being so big. You can just see a giant picture of a smart car here because that's the front camera. <laughs> but we are charged up to 40% state of charge. I actually like this view here. 40% state of charge, 112 miles predicted in all purpose mode. I have it plugged in here just to my Tesla adapter. It's doing 11 kilowatts right now, and it's 135 kilowatt hour battery pack. I was able to pull about 125 kilowatt hours out of it usable. What I want to do though, is see what the truck will do for our trip. So let's end this. Let's hit this. Let's hit this. Phoenix. This infotainment is so snappy. It's so good. So it's calculating our route over there. We'll see what it says. There's two different ways. We could go down this way, or we could go across the pass and then down through Utah. Now, a lot of people have been curious about doing the mountain pass with the Rivian. And guess what? That's kind of what it wants to do. And it says the route has few fast chargers. Huh? I would agree with that. So it basically is saying you're gonna run out of juice here. So what's up with that? In Idaho Springs, it's like you're out of juice. <laughs> but it should do route planning. Not enough battery to get there, go anyway. Huh, it does great route planning normally. So that's kind of interesting. Network, Rivian, ChargePoint, EVgo. We're gonna be playing around with this route planning here on the trip and worst case, I could always just do it manually, right? You know, we, I can handle a road trip plan by myself, but I do like to see what the truck thinks. And perhaps maybe we're freaking it out because we're plugged in, but nope, that shouldn't be because you can see it just did the route plan for Kansas City without literally any issue whatsoever. So I'm not sure why. Um, so like, for example, let's see what charger it was gonna have a stop at here. Remove start six charging stops. I-70 Diner, Walmart, Walmart, tries to target, yeah, 30-ish miles of range each time you're plugging in. Those are all Electrify America stations. That all makes sense. Why couldn't it do Phoenix? So here's what I'm thinking for our route. I think we follow this route. We can go out here to Denver. So many people in the Rivian forums were just wanting to see trip calculations and data going over the pass. And you know what? That sounds like something we can probably do, even though this might be a little bit quicker. Um, I, we need to, It's 7 p.m. right now. We need to be in Phoenix basically in 22 hours. So that should work. Basically, we can. I know we can get over here, no problem. Grand Junction, I don't even think about going over that way. Moab has chargers. I wanna do some off-roading in Moab, but I don't think, unless, if we could stretch it all the way there, maybe we could hit some trails in the morning. How sick would that be? All right, let's not get ahead of ourselves. I would love to run some trails in this thing. So definitely liking that. There's a charger, I believe, somewhere over here. There's one in Blanding. These are only like 60, 70 kilowatt, uh, those CPE 250 charge point units that kind of suck, but at least they'll get us there. We can hit the fast charger in Flagstaff and then pop down to Phoenix. So once 
I think that's gonna be the way we should do it. But uh, Rivian said, hey, you can have your choice of any of the wheels that we have. They have a few to choose from. And I said, yeah, we want the all-terrain ones because it's an off-road truck and we're gonna take it off-road. And then we've spent all week <laughs> efficiency testing and towing testing. We haven't done any off-road. So would love to hit Moab while we're out there. And um, yeah, I think in terms of setup of the truck, I'm gonna keep the tonneau cover closed. It is a fully powered tonneau cover. Here, I'll show you that with this button. You can see it just opens up. Doesn't make the most reassuring of sounds, does it? I can open up the tailgate too. Uh, maybe not while the tonneau cover is moving. There we go. Tailgate open. Looks pretty sick. We have a full air compressor here. So if we do happen to go off-roading, I can air down with this, which would be pretty sick. And then we also have 110 volt outlets on this side. No power closing tailgate. Unlike that F-150 hybrid, great truck, King Ranch. We've been doing a lot of stuff with this. That thing is sick, but it's all about the electric road trip here. Just to give you some stats, again, 135 kilowatt hour pack, about a 48 amp onboard charger for AC charging. I wish they put an 80 amp charger in this thing. Uh, so we're only doing 11 kilowatts right now, maxing out the 48 amp onboard charger. The charge port is up here. Fans just kicked on, probably to cool the onboard charger. And uh, DC charging, it can do a maximum of 500 amps and it's about a 400 volt truck. Although I've never seen it request more than 450 amps. So 181 kilowatt peaks, the most I've seen at this point. Hopefully we'll see 200. I've heard reports of people getting 200 with this truck, um, but I'm not really sure what we're gonna run into. We're gonna need to uh, see what we have. We'll talk about charging along the way. I think it's a great looking truck. I'll show you it throughout the video, but let's hop in. Well, let me feed the dogs, then we'll hop in and we head out on a trip. Goodbye. Goodbye. Love you. Do you guys want to come? You want to go in the Rivian? You can. I don't know if we're staying in dog-friendly hotels. I know you really want to go. Okay, goodbye, goodbye. You stay here. You stay here. Goodbye, <laughs> goodbye. I promise I'll take you both for rides in the Rivian when I come back in a couple days. And we'll get cute pictures of you in the gear tunnel. Heading out on the trip, I'm gonna leave this Rivian tent here for efficiency, but I promise we will be using this in a future video for some camping stuff with this truck. Let's close the charging flap here. Oh, whoops, I actually opened it by accident. It was closing automatically. That is pretty trick. Let's take a look at our state of charge now. We are at 125 miles projected on the guesso meter. I wish I could just force that into percentage mode. That means in EV nerd stuff, 45%. Let's head down and uh, get this trip going. So a lot of the stuff in the Rivian is just like a Tesla. You hit the brake pedal and it turns the vehicle on. And then I can lift up on this right stock. Here, let me kick this light on. It's literally just like a Tesla, straight up into reverse. All seems pretty normal. Cameras come on, really good quality. You guys may remember like early software versions of this were pretty laggy. No longer. I can show front, rear. I have a 360 degree view. I can see my back left and right tire and I can see my front left and right tire. The UI, incredibly snappy. I say we just run all-purpose mode to start, general stuff. Let's reset our trip calculation here. So, boom. That one takes a little second to reset. Yep, energy. We're good to go. Back to nav, our plan. Head down to Denver. Turn right up into the mountains and over we go. I'm looking forward to this. You guys have been asking for us to do this efficiency testing all through here. I'll be logging everything for you.
And we have arrived to a 350 kilowatt Electrify America station. We'll see if this one can deliver the full power. I'll explain that situation here in a second. But first, let's take a look at our trip computer on the way down here. Just under two miles per kilowatt hour. We burned 35 kilowatt hours. I was ripping it. We were just going as quick as traffic would allow. We are in a rush. I have come up with a plan on the way too. I'll explain. 50 miles of projected range. We probably could have stretched it farther. I'll explain why we're doing this here in a second. Let's take a look. 18% state of charge. Let me swipe to activate this station. The Rivian does not have plug in charge, I don't believe, and it doesn't have any sort of plan with Electrify America for free charging. So I'm going to use my Electrify America Pass Plus. We'll see how much it costs to charge. I have it set to charge to 100%. Rivian recommends to do 70% daily. 85% uh, for just sort of extended trips and then 100% just, uh, you know, for, for road trips here. And again, we left with about 40%, 45%, right? So not too bad. I'll explain why we're stopping here. And then I'm also going to get some dinner. Let's plug in. And we have arrived. I've activated the charger with my app. Let's see if the cable can reach. This charging station design isn't great. Like this is a two-hander. One second. And in we go with the charging handle um this would suck if you have to tow mostly because it's pretty tight to get the rivian in here and then if you look over here like the spots aren't huge and if you do have a trailer you'd be blocking this whole area anyway let's take a look at our charging rate and we'll see uh how this thing is doing i hear cable cooling kicking on the charger well, we have just started charging at 18% and we're doing 139 kilowatts, which is as expected. The Rivian uh, Max is about 450 volts seems to be where they don't want the pack charging anymore or going any higher. You can see this nice little green light on the back. That's pretty neat. Matches with the EA station quite nicely. And because of that, CCS has a limitation of 500 amps as part of the standard. Now, some of you may say, well, doesn't Tesla charge at 250 kilowatts in Europe with CCS? The answer is yes, absolutely. Uh, they just don't follow the standard to a T. But basically, any, any public station like this wouldn't be able to output more than 500 amps. And these chargers are actually capable of outputting that much. You know, these 350 kilowatt units can do 500 amps. And from what I hear, perhaps... The 150 kilowatt stations can actually do pretty close as well. Those things can output a total of about uh, 175 kilowatts or so. The problem is a lot of these stations with Electrify America are actually limited to 350 amps instead of 500. That is why we're only charging at about 140 kilowatts right here. I know that's a lot of numbers I just gave to you, but there's a reason I've been doing my charging tests at an EVgo station in uh, Denver, particularly because that's the closest station to me that can output a full 500 amps, which would be 200 kilowatts at 400 volts. Now this particular pack is 450 volts on the high side and I believe based off of initial tests, it doesn't really request more than 450 amps, uh, but still 450 amps uh, at 450 um, uh, uh, volts would be pretty much 200 kilowatts. So you'd be good to go there. So basically, or close enough, nears makes no difference. Basically, I wish these things would output 500 amps, but I have a feeling we're gonna be stuck with 140 kilowatt charging for a lot of this trip is what I'm trying to say. Anyway, I haven't eaten at all today. You can hear I'm stumbling a little bit. Let's go get some food. I'm going to lock the truck with the really cool carabiner thing. You'll hear a little chirp actually when I lock it. And that is going to be instead of a, like a locking honk or a noise, you're just going to hear it go chirp. And that way it blends into its environment a little bit more. Take a listen. Oh, that's unlock. There you go. Beep, beep. <laughs> I'll do it one more time. Unlocked. Locked. Love that. Really love that. All right. Time to go see what kind of food is around here. And uh, I'll, then we're going to charge this up pretty high. And I'll explain why at the end. We are now charged up to, I believe, 97% state of charge. It has taken 70 minutes to get to this point. I actually went in, had a cheeseburger over at the local bar and grill and the reason i've done such a deep charge here at this charging station is because a lot of the guys on the rivian forums have asked can you go over the mountain pass 
on a single charge. So what I've done is I've booked a hotel in Grand Junction, which is just on the other side of the pass. It means we have to go over the Eisenhower Tunnel, Vail Pass, big elevation gain and loss. And what I wanted to do was leave here at a pretty high state of charge, sort of to simulate you, you're in Denver, a lot of people in Denver are buying these things and a lot of them are gonna head over the pass, go skiing, etc. So we have it charged up pretty much to full. I'm gonna plug in the hotel that has a level two charger and see if we can go over the pass on a single charge. If not, there are plenty of bailout options, plenty of chargers. I'm unsure what to think in terms of efficiency. I've made sure the tonneau cover is closed for a little bit more extra aero benefit. So let's, uh, let's plug in the, the hotel and see what it thinks we'll get there with. And then we'll see what we actually get there with. The R1T has a pretty cool camera system. You can see people are coming up and looking at this thing. <laughs> so funny. Everyone's very interested in it. And you can see all the different angles and different events that happen. Really nicely done. There's the dude looking at it. He's like, what in the world is that thing? Anyway, let's go to the nav system here. We are going to the Fairfield Main Street, downtown Grand Junction. It thinks we need to stop and charge for 12 minutes. See, now it's doing route planning. Nice work. I think 238 miles. The truck's predicting 273. I think it sh we should try to do it on one charge. I'm going to put it in conserve mode and see what we can do. Worst case, we'll bail out and charge there at the Glenwood Springs Electrify America station. Nice station. But uh, it says we'll get there at 2.43 a.m. Dang. Dang. Well, that's what happens when you're in a rush to get to Phoenix by tomorrow afternoon. So that's basically what we're doing today. We're getting to here. And then tomorrow we got to do all of that. It's going to be 600 miles or something without fast charging infrastructure. It's going to be out kind of in this not very highly traveled route. Anyway, we're only doing 18 kilowatts here at 98%. So let's unplug. Let's go dinner finished. It really didn't hold me up much. The restaurant was really slow. So, you know, this wasn't the end of the world. And let's take a look at some of our costs. I also don't want to forget. So we've added 98 kilowatt hours, but the charger has delivered 107.6. And so that's your charging inefficiency, especially when you're adding this much power to a vehicle. It's uh, yeah. So it seems like it's about seven or 8% losses, which really isn't bad um, for a DC fast charging. Anyway, We'll go here, we're gonna reset this, so I'm just gonna leave that up to remind myself. It cost me $33 to charge. Again, I pay $4 a month for an America, Electrify America Pass Plus membership. So, we're at 99%. It's not great to DC fast charge any vehicle up to 100% all the time, So, that, and this is a very un-out of spec-like thing. Normally, we charge to 50% and go. As the trip goes on, we'll be taking a look at charging curves and everything like that particularly on the way back because we'll have more higher power chargers on the route I think we're gonna take. So let's stop this. The Rivian shows that it's faulting out, but uh, it should let me pull this out. Yes, we can throw this back here. Here are some details. I saved $13 for my $4 a month charging membership. So that's worth it. You should just do that even for one charging session. And 31 cents a kilowatt hour, 107.9040 kilowatt hours delivered. One hour, 17 minutes to pull it from 18 to 99. That is the most unout of spec like trip ever, isn't it? By the way, I have the tire pressure set to 48 PSI factory. The fans just kicked on the Rivian to probably cool down the battery pack a little bit after that deep charge. Let's jump in and see if we can make it over the beautiful hills. So what we're going to do, of course, is reset the trip. The total energy used we, does take a second. Like, actually quite a bit of time to go. Huh, maybe it needs another hit of the reset trip. Yep, that could be. Let's see, L range, we're pretty much full. We'll go shutting the vents off on the right-hand side. Well, I'll just keep mine going. You can turn off climate conditioning, too. Rear climate's off the way it should be. And I think I'm going to go just one heated seat. If I go back to nav, remove charging stops. It says charging required. Let's do it. Go anyway. 
And then I think we'll go here, vehicle on, conserve, lower ride height to the lowest. I think it actually drives better in stiff, especially through the corners. Well, I'll play around with it. Regen on high, into reverse. High battery charge reduces regenerative braking. We all know that here on this channel. Anyway, let's go. Cameras are looking good. Truck's feeling good. So comfortable to drive this truck, by the way, uh, especially in the standard ride height in all-purpose mode. It is so sweet. But this is one of those cases where conserve mode might actually help us remove a stop. But worst case, I don't mind stopping in Glenwood Springs for a quick top-up. Especially if it's going to be late, that's always a good refresher. So we'll just see how this goes. We'll log the numbers. I know the Rivian guys were interested, and I'll at least let you know the numbers when we get to key points, like when we get to Vail, when we get to, I don't know, a whole bunch of other places. But basically, right now, we are heading deep into the Rocky Mountains. So let's do it. Just been jamming out to the awesome Meridian sound system. You can see the high beams are really good on this vehicle as long as the headlights are clean. We have it in conserve mode, which just runs front wheel drive. And uh, we are gonna be doing the climb in conserve. If anything, it's gonna put a lot of stress on those front motors. No auto high beams in this truck at the moment. Have to do it manually. And uh, yeah, it'll be interesting from a thermal perspective to see how they can handle the climb. But uh, also, yeah, I'm just gonna be cruising just about the speed limit, maybe a little over, between 68, 75, something like that is what we'll target. Ooh, nice GTI going up there. And um, yeah, let's see what this thing can do. We gotta go over the pass. Plenty of bailout opportunities, of course. And we're just starting the climb. I'll update you with efficiency data throughout the drive, but I'm gonna turn up the tunes on this great sound system, lay the seat back a little bit and just Cruise along. By the way, none of these roads seem to be mapped for the uh, driver assistance. So it is just, uh, yep, just manual driving with adaptive cruise control here. Georgetown. We're just going by Georgetown Lake where honestly most of the time, maybe right up until now, you can actually do some driving out on the ice. I've been hammering it normal, you know, 10 over speeds, nothing crazy, but like certainly passing most of the traffic. I don't think anyone passed us. It's cold, 28 degrees Fahrenheit. We are running conserve mode, front wheel drive. And really, I think that's fine. The only time you wouldn't want to run conserve mode is if it's, um, you know, snowy out or if you're going up the pass, but uh, then your speeds would be lower. So I think for the most part, if like you're concerned about efficiency, you know, you pretty much just drive it in this mode anyway. So let's take a look as to how much energy we use to get to Georgetown from the charger. We have used uh, 24 kilowatt hours, 1.45 miles per kilowatt hour. The climb continues, but I told you I'd check in at key points along the route. just reaching the Eisenhower tunnel over here. So let's take a look at the statistics to get up basically to the top of the first big pass. 
It is 23 degrees. The heater's running. I got my heated seat on. Oh, look, a Model 3 over here. That's pretty sweet. Uh, we have used 37 kilowatt hours, 1.28 miles per kilowatt hour. We are in the tunnel. And let's take a look at how much juice. 69% state of charge. So exactly 30% state of charge to get from the Lakewood charger up here to the tunnel. Really not bad. And again, I've just been Again, doing about 10 over the whole time. Nothing fancy, nothing crazy. This thing is just so good at the range stuff. Again, tested at 290 miles at 70 miles an hour on flat ground, and the motors don't seem to care about the climb. So this is conserve mode. Let me slow down to 50 real quick. I'm gonna floor it in conserve. It's still faster than like anything else out there. <laughs> the thing rips. All right, now we're gonna regen down. Let's see if we have any regen limitation. I actually, out on the runway, was yo-yoing this car quite a bit because we were doing launches, then full regen, and the motors did get hot, and it said regen limited. And it could have been battery or inverter or something, of course. The power output was still good, but it did limit regen. So that seems to be the first indication that things are getting hot. I'm not sure if I expect to see any of that here, but we'll, uh, I'll let you know what happens. But there you go about 30% to get up here to the tunnel. the first exit for Silverthorne at the bottom of the hill and uh, we exited the top of the tunnel or the top of the downhill with 37 kilowatt hours used we are now down to 35 kilowatt hours used so that entire downhill we only gained two kilowatt hours and one percent state of charge so surprised I would have expected a little bit more I'm trying to think I got to go back and look at what the model 3 does we've definitely filmed road trips over here uh, but two kilowatt hours on the downhill seemed fine I had it set at 70 miles an hour the whole time which was 10 over back then speed limit just went up to uh, 65 but again 70 miles an hour is really 68 ish GPS it's like between 67 and 68 uh, GPS accurate speed so anyway that's uh, the status here. Let's keep going and I'll let you know further points. But I have to say, sound system's great. Headlights are good. I wish I could actually aim the headlights up just a little bit for some more range on low beams, but the spread is amazing. The views are amazing. The seat comfort is great. The cabin noise is good. There's honestly nothing really majorly wrong with this truck and the UI is stellar. Aside from the route planning being a little wonky, I have to say, and the one time the um, driver assistance just said, uh, you know, failure or whatever, and then it just kicked right back on right after that. That's good. Although, again, no, um, no lane centering at all this entire trip yet. Really kind of bummed about that. Would have really liked to have some lane centering.
the peak of Vail Pass right about now. And so, welcome to 10,662 feet. We have averaged 1.53 miles per kilowatt hour, 48 kilowatt hours used, and 61% state of charge. Again, leaving at 99 out of the Lakewood Charger. And now, I think we have a pretty sharp downhill on the other side of this. I'll let you know what we end up with pulling into Vail. And welcome to Vail, Colorado. You're pretty much looking at it. The town is squished right in between the ski mountain. Uh, we ski here quite often, actually love it here. And um, let's take a look at the stuff. 47 kilowatt hours to get here, 86.4 miles, of course, 1.84 miles per kilowatt hour. And in terms of percent, oops, wrong one. Let me hit the correct button. Got to hit it with one hand, 61%. So really not bad, that downhill's helpful. We don't really recapture too much on the downhill, but it certainly uh, certainly doesn't burn juice going downhill, that's for sure. That's pretty normal, I see that very often uh, with electric cars and uh, regen. You don't necessarily always gain, but certainly it elongates your drive. For example, I do a lot of canyon driving and on the way down, sometimes I'll gain a little bit, sometimes I'll lose a little bit, but it usually is you burn a ton on the way up and you can pretty much even yourself out on the way down, uh, you know, sort of not losing anything from the top because the truck also has rolling resistance and I'm running the heater and some other things. But anyway, absolutely beautiful night for a drive as usual. As I have been saying, 28 degrees Fahrenheit, cabin temperature set to 71. I'm staying perfectly conditioned, I would say, and I'm certainly not babying it. We're ripping through. Welcome to Glenwood Springs, Colorado. It is beautiful here, one of my favorite places. We are just gonna be cruising through on our way to the hotel in Grand Junction. Pretty sure we're gonna make it on one charge without issue. Uh, you can see we had quite a bit of downhill, so we are up to 2.15 miles per kilowatt hour, and um, all is looking pretty good. We've so far used 68 kilowatt hours to get the R1T over here and it's warming up. We're now up to 37 degrees as we've lost a little bit of elevation coming down into Glenwood. We are at 44% state of charge. Plenty, plenty, plenty left in the tank. Springs. This is our stats. We used 105 kilowatt hours to get here, 228 miles, 2.18 miles per kilowatt hour. And we are at, let's take a look, 14% state of charge. So we made it officially across the big section of the Rockies and we still have 42 miles of range remaining predicted just because we were on that downhill. Look at this thing, phantom braking. Yep, it does that, and then there was actually nothing there. Um, we are heading downtown right now to uh, head to the hotel for the night that has a uh, charger. It's pretty. Th this section of road is pretty sparse with hotel charging, but uh, found one with six charge point units. Welcome to Grand Junction, Colorado, where we are staying the night. So always plug in ABC, always be charging, especially with a battery pack this big. 
should be 6.6 .6 kilowatts uh, for each car. Let's see. Let's focus. Yeah, power. It's uh, thinking. Let's make sure we can get the full six kilowatts here. Fingers crossed we can. Ramping up. Let's take a look inside the truck here. Yep. Six kilowatts. There we go. I'm going to grab my bag. Check into the Fairfield Hotel. We're charging next to an older Model S, which is awesome. And a newer Model S. And uh, yeah, time for bed. We called the hotel, of course. I called the hotel to make sure that the charger was available. They said, yep, no worries. Always do that before you arrive. And good morning from Glenwood Springs, Colorado. No, Grand Junction, Colorado. We've been here for, I wanna say about five and a half hours, something like that. And so let's take a look to see if this charger was even useful because again, six kilowatt charging is pretty slow. The answer is a bit. We're charged up to 36% and uh, 13 hours remaining. Anyway, we have to run over to the Electrify America station down the street and do a pretty deep charge because yesterday was the Rocky Mountain test on one charge. Today, it gets so much more exciting. So we'll put our topo bag in the back. This is made in Fort Collins, by the way, where we live. And let's unplug and head to the Electrify America station. So after a very much needed night of rest, I'm feeling great. I realized I left my bag at home. So we need to go to like get some clothes and stuff. <laughs> Thankfully I had my backpack and I always keep a spare set in there. So we're good for today, but tomorrow, not so good. Um, have to say the, the hotel was great. Fairfield Inn Suites, no complaints at all. The uh, bed was comfortable. As soon as my head hit the pillow, I was out. Again, we got there at about 2.30, something like that in the morning, leaving here at 7.50 a.m. And uh, you know, that's, that's probably the shortest overnight stop I would go for, but I, I'm so excited. I actually woke up like, I can't wait to do this thing because there's always been this little shortcut to get from Grand Junction to Moab that I've been wanting to do. And I've been wanting to get to Moab with this truck. And you know, we only have one week with it and we had to do a ton of testing. So I didn't get to do everything I want to do with it. But one of the things I definitely want to do is go wheeling. We got to take this thing off road. And so we're going to do a little bit of like a dirt road type thing. Everyone's curious about the efficiency on a dirt road. I just want to go shred it around, see how it drives on loose surface. Um, so we're going to be doing that uh, on the way over to Moab. I believe the first half is pavement and then it goes to dirt over the LaSalle Mountains. It's going to be gorgeous. I did some searching on some off-road apps and found a pretty good trail. There's no snow. It's been dry. They're like, if it rains even slightly, you, you just can't make it. They're like, it's totally impassable. So we are again at about 35% state of charge and I'm going to do a pretty deep charge because we have to go through Moab either way. I'll explain on the map, but basically there's only a 50 kilowatt charger in Moab and one DC charger. There's four superchargers, but there's one charge point CPE 250 limited to 50 kilowatts at the electric cooperatives office. I've been there and um, it works. It's got great ratings on plug share so if it doesn't work we're hosed but I'm pretty sure it does work and we are essentially going to yep yeah, pulling into EA we're essentially going to charge here until we taper below 50 kilowatts because we're going to need the juice and Moab anyway um, but it'd be faster here to just charge until we hit 49 kilowatts and then we'll go over to Moab and top up the rest. Let's get this thing charging. Here we are. So let's open up the port. I've left the DC pin thing down so we can just knock right in. Love that. I love to have the option of the cover for the DC pins if we're going to go fording through water or we're following something really dusty. But if we're on a road trip, constantly plugging and unplugging, you just leave that down. Really well thought out design. Plugged in instantly. Cable cooling went. That was probably the fastest I've ever heard cable cooling go. I have to say... Uh, this Rivian has been charging great. It's been communicating wonderfully with all of the chargers. Genuinely, watch it have an issue now. Genuinely have not had one issue DC fast charging this truck. It's just been absolutely amazing. And we're already charging. We're going. Look at that. Up to 100 kilowatts. I don't like how the screen goes away. It goes small. Is this a 350 amp limitation? Yes, it is. But I like how I left it out overnight, right? It was plugged into a uh, you know, six kilowatt charger, but 
basically it's showing no signs of cold gating at all, which is great because the truck, I don't believe has on route battery preconditioning, but with such a big battery, it actually becomes less of a necessity, especially if it doesn't have a very high charge rate like this vehicle. So, you know, Electrify America was telling me, hey, it was just your station by your house that had a 350 amp limitation. But I am fairly certain based off of feedback from you guys and everyone around, these are software limited right now to 350 amps uh, maximum. And what it really should be doing is about 450 into the truck, closer to 500 to get us up to that 180 kilowatt range. And I've heard of people maxing out Again, 450 amps, 450 uh, volts, right around 200, 201 kilowatts. And I think this truck can do it. So we got to play around a little bit more. But sadly, there's very few 500 amp capable chargers. Now, from what I hear, the new Signet chargers on the newest software can do 500 amps here with Electrify America. And at the end of the day, you know, we're talking about a few minute charging difference on a small battery pack car, but on something like this that actually has a pretty fat charging curve, uh, all the way up to, you know, 40, 50%, that can be, you know, 10, 15 minute difference. I, I, again, I'm just guessing. I haven't done the actual test. We could do that. Uh, need more time with the truck <laughs> so we could start, you know, getting all these variables in. Basically, there's no option here. These are the fastest chargers here in town. And my guess is it would make no difference if we plug into a 350 kilowatt or 150 kilowatt. Again, charging station etiquette, always use these last just in case a leaf rolls up. There's just one Chatamo left. And you're actually going to start seeing Electrify America chargers without Chatamos uh, going installed, especially in California. I think starting this year, there's already some there, all CCS. So CCS is the future. We knew that. That's these. And so honestly, what we probably should have done was just plug into that 150 kilowatt unit right there and then left these open for a Taycan, e-tron GT, Lucid, Ionic 5, EV6, GV60. You know, these types of cars that really actually need the 350 kilowatt chargers, but it's seven ish in the morning, 745 in the morning. No one is here <laughs> and I think we are okay. So uh, let me show you what we're up to today because it's just going to be something that dreams are made of. I am so excited and you know what? We might be late to Phoenix because I'm probably going to get carried away having fun with this thing, but I think it'll be worth it. So let's go in the car and I'll show you what's up. So let's go to Moab. Boom. Moan. <laughs> Moab. Thank you. So what it's going to want us to do is probably to go up here over 70, past it, and then down through the front entrance to Moab. Yep. Hour 45 minutes. Here's what we're going to do. Through the mountains on dirt in some good scenery just for fun. So let's see. It wants us to charge here for 16 minutes in order to go this route. The problem is there's only one 50 kilowatt charger in Moab and it doesn't make sense for us to leave a higher power charger like this until we taper below 50 because the next charger after Moab on the way down to Phoenix, which would be down this, we're going to do this stretch here through blending. This is only, I think, a 62 kilowatt charger. So out here in the mountains, we just don't have high power charging, which actually makes this vehicle's 400 volt or you know, sort of 200 kilowatt max rate, less of a deal when you're doing a lot of off-roading and, you know, exploring through the mountains. Anyway, once we do that, we'll go from Blanding down to Flagstaff and then into Phoenix. And once we get down through here, we'll be back in the high power charger area region. So basically for this entire stretch, for the bulk of the day, we're going to be away from the big high power charging networks out on an adventure in the Rivian R1T and we can't go to Moab and not do a trail. So we should at least get there, make sure we can get there without issue, and then see if we could do, I don't know, fins and things. There's so many cool little trails we could do out there that this truck would just destroy. It'd be amazing. We are holding steady right around 150 kilowatts as to be expected, but now we're gonna start to taper right around here in that 60 to 70% range. We're gonna be taking a big hit. So let's be mindful of that because right up to about here, it pretty much rockets straight through and that's pretty good for your road trip stuff. That's about where you wanna to charge to 60, 65 uh, percent on a road trip. Yep, there we go. Just started tapering off. This is when I would unplug and head to the next charger on a road trip, of course, because 
the, usually this is plenty range to get to your next charger, but here's what we have going on. We are gonna go from here in Grand Junction. Actually, one of the reasons I wanted to stay downtown Grand Junction is because the Electrify America station where we are so far off the highway, it's really kind of a pain. So I was like, we'll just stay down here, throw it on a level two, get as much juice as we can, charge it up pretty high in the morning, and now we're heading down this. This is a paved road, beautiful road, 141, to Gateway, Colorado. Once we are in Gateway, Colorado, that's when we're gonna start hitting some dirt roads, and we'll basically walk our way through here over to Moab, and then maybe we'll do some trails out in this area of Moab here, um, just to at least get this thing flexed out and try some of these sweet off-road modes that it has. Really looking forward to it. But yep, we've tapered down to 134 kilowatts. I think I'm just gonna shut climate off. We need every last ounce of seconds here to make this day go by quicker. The more time we can save charging, the more time we can spend off-road wheeling. And that's really important. And uh, one thing we're gonna do if we hit any crazy trails is we're gonna air down the tires. And oh, sometimes it's there as a damper. You can see under here, there's just a little little damper. It's not actually an active tailgate. Um, one, you know, one thing we can do here is just set our tire pressures with that. And we'll probably air down. It's still a heavy vehicle to 30 to 32 PSI, unless we're in deep sand, we'll go a little bit less, but really looking forward to seeing how this thing does over distance on dirt and uh, looking at the efficiency of that. And then also trying some of the off-road drive profiles like rock crawl and some other stuff that'll be perfect for Moab. We can't spend too much time, sadly, the Hummer EV situation, there's like all these presentations on its technical stuff. Everything I need to know about the truck starts at like 6 p.m. tonight in Phoenix. So we're going to have as much fun as we possibly can. And honestly, we what's probably going to happen is I'm going to get carried away and we'll get to Phoenix late. But we need to at least attempt to get to Phoenix on time. <laughs> oh, man, I love this truck so much. It looks so cool. There is a Starbucks about a couple blocks this way and I may walk over to it, we'll see. It is getting windy out here. We are now down to about 50 kilowatts at 80%. We're at 82% state of charge. I think it's time we unplug, head to Gateway, Colorado on a nice little twisty road, maybe sport mode, maybe we'll rip it a little bit. And then it's dirt roads and trails out to Moab. I can't wait. So let's exit this screen right here. Sometimes it's a little laggy, come on screen. You can do it, there you go. Here are the stats, 33 minutes, about 20 bucks. We put in about 63 kilowatt hours and you can see we're doing roughly 50 kilowatts, which is what we'll get in Moab. So no losses if we leave now. I'm gonna hit stop. Always throws a fault code whenever I hit stop, it goes red. Put this in there. Because we're gonna go on dirt, we'll close that. Man, this, I love the front end. I know it's polarizing. Some people don't like it. I think it's sweet. Trails, let's go find some dirt, finally, in an electric truck. 